Hello and welcome. So this is the webinar for doing research as an undergraduate online student. Our presenters are Dr. Shelley Presley and Dr. Lee Daffin. We also have a few uh, student presenters that will be joining to share the student perspective on doing research. So during our live session, there were some technical difficulties. So the recorded session will be starting already in progress. Only a couple minutes are missed, and I don't think it will hinder you learning on how to do research as an undergraduate student, so you should be fine. I hope you enjoy the webinar. Thank you. Component is uh, using techniques or methods that are appropriate for that discipline. And then fourth is you have a plan to share what you've done with the community or the institution or wherever you um, plan to share it. That could be in the form of a journal article, that could be a presentation at a conference, that could be presenting at a conference doing a poster. We'll talk a little bit about Circa towards the end of the presentation. Um, so your form of sharing what you've done is, is important. Why might you want to do research? Um, so here's where I want you guys to put some ideas in the chat window about why you're interested in doing research. So um, why did you sign up for this webinar? And um, okay, Stephanie. You just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so take a few minutes here and brainstorm. Uh, think about why you would want to do research. What would be some of the benefits for you to get started in research? Um, spread ideas that people possibly haven't thought about yet. Yep. Good. Find the truth. Be able to differentiate legitimate uh, sources from illegitimate ones. Yep. That's a process in doing research. Um, you want to improve your knowledge and, and learn about the field that you're doing, that you're in right now, right? Research is a great way for you to explore if the major that you've selected is correct. Um, you want to contribute to a certain idea or question. Maybe you're passionate about something. Uh, you know, who wouldn't want to find the cure for cancer, right? If that's something that you're passionate about, um, that can be a great uh, motivation for doing research. Um, you want to explore uh, new ideas, yes. Um, learn more about something in a little more depth, right? You're taking classes and you might learn about something kind of on the surface, but maybe you're really interested and you want to dive down deeper and see what it really looks like. These are great ideas. Uh, you want to benefit future generations. You want to go to grad school. That's a great way to try out grad school. So getting involved in research can really help you determine if grad school is for you. Uh, if, if you like it, you're going to do well in grad school. Um, so um, let's see, what else? Progress technology, yep. We need solutions to a lot of problems in this world. <laughs> Like like global warming for, in my world. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you guys are, are hitting on some of the big ones. Um, getting experience in your field, thinking about graduate school. These are all really good reasons for getting motivated in research. Okay. <coughs> Thanks. <coughs> okay, so here's my idea, my list of why students want to get involved in research. Sorry, experience is one of the top and get, get messed up. Getting experience in your field looks good on your resume. You can make a difference. Um, resume or Research is challenging. Um, you, often you can earn credit, academic credit to do research, or you can sometimes get paid to do research. Depends on your area and your field. Um, you think about future career options. Uh, also, when you're thinking about future career, whether it's graduate school or job, the skills that you learn doing research are job transferable. So employers are looking for students that have skills that you can develop doing research. So great way to help boost your resume so that you can get a job when you graduate. Um, you can interact with faculty work with them on a more personal level uh, on their research, and, and that's going to get you letters of recommendation, right? Mm -hmm. Faculty that know what you do and, and hold you accountable can write letters to help you get into grad school or get that job. So you're interacting with faculty at a different level than you are when you are sitting in a classroom. You can travel, go to conferences, present your research, 
at those meetings and those conferences, you can meet other leaders in that field. They might be future graduate uh, mentors for you. They might be future employers. All of those types of people will be at those meetings uh, where you can network with them. All right, so why do faculty mentor undergraduates? And I'm just going to skip to the answer on this one. Um, and they do it for a lot of reasons. Uh, Dr. Daffin will share his experience uh, when I'm done, but um, this is what faculty here tell me, that they want to include undergraduates because it's the right thing to do. They want to pay it back. A lot of faculty have had great experiences doing research themselves as an undergrad, and so they want to give students the opportunity to do it as well. Um, faculty say that our undergraduates help them get their research done, and they are better sometimes than their graduate students. A lot of times undergrads bring a different perspective to the research project, um, and that is a refreshing idea for our faculty, and um, it, it keeps them on their toes, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, they also are recruiting, so they may be working with you during the semester and they, they think you're doing a great job and guess what, they're going to see if you want to stay on and do graduate work with them. Mm -hmm. So faculty will often recruit students to, um, to do the research at the graduate level. Okay, so how do you get started? And that's what the Office of Undergraduate Research is for. We can help you get started. Um, and a lot of the way, ways that we do that are we webinars or information sessions like this. Uh, we also can apply, you can apply for scholarships through the Office of Undergraduate Research. These scholarships are available to any undergraduate, any campus, any major. Um, they're $1,000 scholarships. So if that's something that you are interested in, start thinking about this and consider applying uh, this spring. You will need to have a faculty mentor identified. Part of the application to get the scholarships requires a letter of recommendation from a faculty mentor that you will be working with to do research. You'll also have to write a short paragraph about what you intend to do on the research side. So um, these scholarships are designed to allow you to do research uh, we recognize that a lot of students have to work and make money to survive. And so if we can take some of that burden of working away and give you money to do research, that looks better on your resume, gives you more experience, and it still pays the bills. So that's what these scholarships are designed for. Um, this is another great resource, our website. This is the Office of Undergraduate Research homepage where you'll find a lot of resources along the left-hand spine over here. Um, everything you need to know about how to apply for the scholarships is there. Um, we also uh, put on an event called Circa every spring. And the Circa event is called Showcase for Undergraduate Research and Creative Activities. I want you to pay special attention to uh, this picture in the middle. This is one of our global campus students from years past presenting their research during Circa. So the Showcase for Undergraduate Research is on the Pullman campus, and global campus students are welcome to come to Pullman to present, or they can present virtually uh, similar to what this student is doing in the picture. Uh, we've had uh, global campus students present at Circa for the last uh, four to five years. Um, the event itself is a poster symposium. The uh, posters and the presenters are judged, and there are scholarships awarded to the top presenters. There are different categories, so there are eight categories that you would apply to, you know, depending on your discipline, so engineering or um, applied science or biology-related um, discipline, different categories. And then there's awards for different levels. So even beginning researchers can present at Circa. So don't be turned away or scared about Circa if you've only been doing research for one semester, because we have novice awards for students that have been doing research for a very short period of time. And so that is something you would be eligible for. Um, so Circa 2019 will be on March 25th. And um, 
you're welcome to take a look at our website. Um, Andrea tells me that the Global Campus Circa information is available on yes. the Global Campus website, and there are um, scholarships available there as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, so. and it's on uh, connections.wsu.edu. Uh, Great. So that is kind of an overview of the Office of Undergraduate Research, but now I want to turn it over to Dr. Daffin, who can share a little bit about his experience of actually doing research with Global Campus students. Hi, everybody. Okay, so this is, just to be clear, this is one way it can be done. This is not a way every department does it, but this is one way uh, that we, at least in our department, conduct research online. So just to give you kind of a heads up, we have two kind of positions students can do when they want to do research online. I work with all students doing either one of these. Um, our site 498 is research assistant, where you basically work with me and you come up, I, you're basically working with me on a project that I'm currently uh, running. I've been IRB approved for it. So you're doing different types of tasks I'll talk about later. Uh, the other opportunity is independent study. And I do this two ways online. Um, we do a lit review option. With the lit review option, you're literally doing an exhaustive literature review and writing up what becomes an introduction in a paper down the line. You can actually use this in grad school when you go in, potentially. And then the other option is hypothesis testing, where it's kind of like the 498 opportunity where you're doing research, but in this case here, you're doing something you come up with. It's your own unique project you want to do. So I'm not going to get into too much detail on this, but just to let you know, I, I start working with students right away through the application process. So if a student's interested in doing 498 or 499, you go into, just like students um, are familiar with the resource room, you go into the resource room and you basically go under professional experiences for online students. And then you, you can read about the opportunities, what's required. At the bottom of that area there are little folders for independent study and then for research assistant and you're finding their application. And so you actually go through an application process, and this is just two pages of it, but you go through, complete the application, turn it in. Um, usually I accept only in the fall, I accept, I, I submit applica or accept applications spring and the summer, and then you work with me for fall and spring. So um, you would apply in the spring and the summer, and then I will let you know via email if you've been accepted and you get an email sort of like this. And then once you've kind of been accepted, the semester starts, the, the question is, what do you do? So in, in for Psych 499, how I work with students is I have a Blackboard course space. In the Blackboard course space, there's information for both the literature reviews and my hypothesis testing students. Um, this information can include, uh, it can include information on the timeline. So what you're actually going to do when I'm working with you, it's, it's relatively structured. Uh, to a degree, you've got kind of freedom to do whatever project you want to do within reason. What I do is August is where you start out identifying what you want to actually research for lit review, um, what you want to learn more about, what theory you want to kind of study, whatever. You identify that in August, submit it to me. In fact, the lit review students just did that. Um, in September, you begin conducting your exhaustive literature search on whatever the topic is, obtaining articles. And then generally October through January, you're going to read and summarize the articles and then check back for newly published studies that might be out. You're in generally in December, and I'll show you this in a second, you're turning an annotated bibliography to me. I'll go through the bibliography, look at what you've done, make suggestions. Um, if it looks pretty good, then you kind of proceed forward. Getting into the, again, remember this goes from fall to spring. So you're going from October through January working on reading and summarizing articles. As you get into the spring semester, you're then working on writing the paper through February and March. And then April, you're submitting it to me and then making whatever changes I require. And then generally, you have that turned in by May or by the end of April. For just an example of deliverables for this semester, students submitted their topics by August 31st. Annotated bibliography, they're turned in by December 9th. And again, I'll go over it. It just runs across semester, so I'll be sending them feedback over break, and students can usually continue working on their projects during break. Um, they submit their draft of the literature review by April 6th, and then next year they're due to their final version by May 3rd. If students, and I, I do have students that present at Circa each year, obviously if you're going to present at Circa, you're going to have slightly accelerated um, due dates. 
and once I know a student wants to present what they've done at Circa, and then I kind of adjust these dates. And the main adjustment is on the draft. It'd be kind of more so due about March 6th, say about a month earlier. And then I'll go through, get some corrections back. You'll start generating your poster. And then um, you can do a final version still due by May, but you're going to get a little more accelerated just because you want to actually do the presenting. So in terms of deliverables, do actually submit in the Blackboard course space, and then I'll provide feedback through there. But a lot of 499 students also email me questions, and I just had some recently too. And I'll email you back. At times, if, if it's better to talk on the phone, I'll talk on the phone with you. Everybody's project's unique. There's a general kind of process you go through for doing the lit review, but everybody everybody's project's unique for one another. So given I, I don't try to give general feedback to everybody. I try to give you just kind of here's your marching orders, here's how you start doing your lit review, here's how you summarize your articles, but you know what articles you find, what direction it takes, you kind of lead along the way. For hypothesis testing, you have the following timeline approximately. August, September is when you're designing your project, working out the details, completing human, re or human subject training. If you haven't already done it over the summer, most of my hypothesis testing students do that over the summer. September, we work on IRB forms. That's an interesting process. We get in those in, and then any changes IRB recommends. And then hopefully the project's approved sometime around in October, if, if it moves that quickly, and usually it does, but hopefully it is. Um, data collection, October through January. Um, I also encourage students, kind of like the lit review students, you're going to write an introduction, you're going to do a review of the literature, not as extensive as what they're going to do, but pretty close. So then you write your introduction, your method section of your paper, get ready for a poster. Um, February, you're working on analyzing your data, writing results and discussion section. March, I, I generally, I definitely want the hypothesis testing students and the 498, I'll get to in a minute, the research assistants presenting something at Circus. So that's the expectation. So they're doing their data analysis in February, writing results and discussion section. March, early March, preparing their poster. The uh, department has the ability to print posters for you. So once you've got it done and I've looked at it with you and worked with you to kind of get it just the way we want it, I'll submit it for printing. And then late March, March 25th, next year, you're presented circuit. So Stephanie Johnson's on the call too. She's uh, my current 499 hypothesis testing student. And then April, we have a psychology department symposium, which gives you a second opportunity. Smiley face back at you, Stephanie. <laughs> uh, April, you have the opportunity to present at the psychology department symposium as well. It's structured a lot like Circa, just on a smaller scale. Um, and again, it's like with Circa, where you have the ability to, if you can't actually attend in person, you can do it over, uh, kind of like we're doing right now, you can do it over webcam. Same thing, the department has that same uh, capability. And then if you're working on papers, your finish shows up during this time. And then late April, early May is when you're submitting your final paper, intro method results discussion, uh, paper to me for approval. And then just example of deliverables, project scopes due by September 15th. Stephanie, um, <laughs> I better see a smiley face here in a second. I'm going to see a fairly face. Okay, all right. IRB paperwork, September 30th. Stephanie, intro method. And you have nothing after that, January. There's also discussion, uh, discussion section by March. But again, if we're doing your, your well, actually, yeah, your March is good. It's consistent for Circa. But submit your poster for Circa by about March 10th. I'll review, make adjustments, turn it in for printing. And then final version of the paper by April 28th. But again, in between there, we're doing Circa on March 25th. So. And then it, again, just like with the lit review, uh, yeah, the lit review option. There's places in Blackboard to turn this all in, and then there's there's examples for hypothesis testing and for lit review. There's resources in there. I've got places to get the IRB forms from, guidance from the IRB, APA resources, etc. Research ethics, statistics. If you need help with that, I put the statistics textbook we have online and our research methods textbook. So plenty of resources if you need it. And then kind of the last thing, it's like 498. That's the person that's research assistant that works directly with me on projects that I'm running. Fall task, or what we're doing right now, is basically kind of what the hypothesis testing is doing, getting together uh, IRB paperwork. We're preparing, um, it, looking at the literature right now to see if we need specific measures or whatever. 
the fall we'll be doing data collection going into maybe even spring spring we're working on interim method results discussion for potential publications but also for circa again so 498 again it's a lot like really the lit review and the hypothesis testing kind of the one you're doing that but you're doing that work with me on a project that i've actually uh kind of set up and then uh opportunities to present your research i have this in the 499 space the circuit websites there i got the site department symposium information there and then circa has excellent guidelines on presenting a poster i've got those up there for you too so i'm plugging what shelly's doing thanks and then the last step is communicating. So this is an example here. What we do, I like to actually publish. Or publish. This is uh, Ashley Ann Jones was a 498 RA for me two years ago or three years ago. I can't remember which one. Took us until it was two years ago. It took us into actually this year, March, to get our, our study, to our published on exam performance for non proctored and proctored exams. But there is an opportunity there that if our research is strong, good enough, that we can actually try to publish it. And you could get a publication out of it. That's not guaranteed, but there is a possibility for that to happen. So, okay. That's, that's a, really kind of it there. And then, so. There's, there's some great questions coming through. Keep them coming. Do you have any questions? Uh, why don't we ask the students to talk a little bit okay. first, I okay. think. Um, Becky, maybe? So, yeah. Becky, can you uh, chime in a little now on what's it like as a student to uh, be involved in research? So, yeah, my name is Rebecca Pazis, and I did the 499 psychology hypothesis testing that Dr. Daffin has just been talking about. I began my project in 2016, and it culminated in attending Circa in 2017, where I received the Crimson Award. Um, I did a correlational study about nature relatedness and stress. Specifically, do those who experience a connection to the natural world seek out nature exposure to relieve stress? Also, previous research had shown nature exposure can reduce stress. Uh, I hadn't found much out there about the actual behavior of those who are considered high in nature relatedness. So that was what was kind of novel uh, about the hypothesis testing I did. So why do research? We already talked a bit about some of that. And all, this, all of my peers, my stu fellow students, um, had some great perspectives. Uh, and I can tell you, too, from what I had experienced, it really helped solidify what we learn in classes by really applying our knowledge. For example, I was a bit nervous about the actual nuts and bolts of the data analysis part, which is probably a pretty common thing. Um, and Dr. Daffin really guided me through it. And then I finished the project feeling a lot more comfortable with statistics, using SPSS software, whatnot. You also get to know a professor better by working directly with them as your mentor. Dr. Daffin was my mentor. And, you know, getting that kind of perspective or that attention, I think, with faculty can be really different as an online student because we don't actually see our instructors like on-campus students do. So this is just a really good opportunity to have a little more contact. Also, as everybody already mentioned, if you're going to grad school, which I am planning on doing, this an independent research is a great thing to be able to do to put in your CV. As online students, we don't have some of the advantages, like I said, as on-campus students, such as being able to work in a lab or whatnot. Uh, but this really makes our online experience, I think, more robust by demonstrating that we've taken the initiative to pursue research. And I think some of times uh, our undergrad research can be used as a starting point for graduate research, too. And finally, uh, you really do get the personal satisfaction of being able to delve a lot more deeply into a subject you find interesting, and then the research process itself. Uh, so kind of the nuts and bolts of what I did, um, as I mentioned already, doing the research really helps connect to faculty. You work directly with a faculty member who acts as your mentor, guiding you through the research process and really helping you through any sticky points. Um, it was nice to be able to work with Dr. Daff, and it really helped me feel closer to WSU and made me feel, I think, a bit more like a real WSU student, even though I'm online. And as he mentioned, you know, he speaks to students by email, by phone. Um, before Circa, we met uh, at the Global Campus Rendezvous, which was being held in Tacoma that time. Um, that was really helpful because that was the moment I thought, oh, geez, how do I analyze my data? What are the best ways to do this? And we we're able to sit down in person then and really work through some of the best ways to do it to uh, get at what I was trying to find. 
Uh, for my project, I conducted a literature review and then came up with my hypothesis. And then I designed a survey using two existing measurement scales, adding several new novel questions to one of those scales, which was about um, stress coping measures. And then I entered the whole thing along with demographics questions into Qualtrics. And then WSU students answered the survey, and then I was able to analyze the data on SPSS. And yes, I found a moderate positive correlation. Woohoo! I was happy about that. Uh, students who were high in nature relatedness actually did seek out nature to relieve stress more than those lower in nature relatedness. So after I had done this part of the project, the next step was actually presenting at Circa. And I see people are putting in questions, and I'm sorry, I'm not being very good at looking at the uh, questions very well. So we might go over them. I just saw one asking if my survey was anonymous. Yes, it was. And also, I should mention that we did do the IRB paperwork, and my project was exempt from IRB. I mean, we had to get that exemption because it had minimal uh, impact, you know, expected impact or risks for the students taking it. Um, so next step was presenting at Circa. To prepare for Circa, you, um, as the people have already mentioned, you design a poster that contains a summary of all your information about your research, including your findings. Um, my mentor gave me a template to use, and then he got it printed in Pullman. So it was all ready to go when I arrived. I also rehearsed, of course. That's a good tip. Rehearse what you're going to say and really think about the questions people might ask you. Um, at Circa, you stand by your poster in a room with a lot of other students who do it. Judges stop by and ask you to explain about your project and um, may ask you follow-up questions. And other faculties and students who are not judging you might also stop by. I talked to a biology professor, for example, who was interested in my project, that really helped me to see the interdisciplinary nature of the work that I was doing, which was really cool. It was just a really good connection to make. And then at the end of the event, you get your written comments from your judges, uh, which is also really helpful to see their feedback on your presenting and, and your project. Circa is really exciting. Not only do you get a chance to talk about your study, you see what other students are working on, you get to meet a lot of people who usually online students we only you know see in a way you know through email. There's just a lot of energy on campus that day. So I highly encourage anyone on there today to consider doing your own research or literature review. It was just a really great process that I learned a lot from. And don't be afraid of what you don't know because you always have your mentor to help you. So you're not alone kind of in the process. So think about what you're really curious about, how you might investigate it, and apply next year. Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. Yeah, thanks, Rebecca. Thanks. OK, Stacy. Can you hear me? Yep, you're up. OK. <laughs> um, well. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, I'm Stacey Ahuja and I'm a psychology major and a senior here at Global Campus. Um, in contrast to uh, the great information that Rebecca just shared, I am just beginning my project um, and I'm working with Dr. Daffin on the literature review option that we saw on the slides earlier. And um, what this means is that I am currently in the process of gathering all of the literature on a particular topic with the goal of synthesizing it into a whole that will hopefully um, identify a direction for future research. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, this uh, literature review might be thought of as an introduction portion of a graduate program thesis or dissertation. So because I do have plans to apply to graduate school next year, I feel like this project is a really great opportunity to set myself up for some testing, like some hypothesis testing, similar to what Becky just described down the road in graduate school. Um, so on that note, if you are a global campus student with plans to go on to grad school, you really do need opportunities like these to be a competitive applicant. And it is up to us as students to seek these opportunities out. Um, thankfully, we are in a program that offers these opportunities. I know many other programs 
don't offer these opportunities. So I feel really fortunate. Um, and even if you don't have plans to go to graduate school or if you're currently uncertain about your plans, I would still encourage you guys to engage in research anyway because the experience is completely unique and you really get a chance to wonder about something and then fully investigate it in detail. <laughs> um, for instance, my research topic relates to the multisensory components of embodiment and virtual reality. <laughs> Uh, which is not only related to my choice of a graduate program, but something I generally just want to know about. Um, and the last thing I'd like to mention, um, which is to anyone who may feel intimidated by the scope of these projects or constrained by the online environment, don't. Um, we really do have people here willing to support us. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to work with Dr. Daffin as I'm really confident that this experience will make me a competitive grad school applicant, and I'm sure that will be the case for others as well. Um, so really, that's it. Thanks for letting me share my experience so far. And you know, like I said, I'm in the early stages, but I'm happy to answer any questions that any might, you know, anyone has at any time. Thank you, Stacy. Yeah. It's Stacy's original. Stacy was going to move from lit review to hypothesis testing. Uh, there's another student doing it. Charles, are you the other one doing that? Or am I mixing you up with somebody else? There's another student who's actually going to move from uh, the, the lit review, get that kind of basis done and figure out the gaps are and then move forward from there. It's a kind of a cool little way to do that. I hadn't even thought about that. Stacy initially was going to do it. The reason why Stacy's not is because you heard her topic area is virtual reality. That's a little more difficult. Ah, it is. I thought it was you. Thanks. I, I, it's a little more difficult to do online. So I encourage her to graduate and, and go off and run and do that. But I'm happy to have her for two more semesters. So Stacy, don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> no, you, I, I, I don't. <laughs> want to do so. All right. So. I yeah. Um, you want to take some of these questions because you guys are sending some great oh, questions. So. Not, we're not getting off. Um, so Morgan Schmidt. It asked, are the scholarships purely research-based? Well, is when you were yeah, so Morgan, if you're referring to the scholarships that we give through the Office of Undergraduate Research, yes, they are designed to support you to do research. Um, how you use that money is up to you. Some students use that money to pay for you know, a license to software or to buy equipment in a lab if that's where they're doing their research, or they use that money to travel to a meeting to present, or they use that money to pay themselves for their time. It's it's totally up to you. It comes as a scholarship, and so it's completely up to you how you use that money. Um, it just recognize that it is a scholarship, so it, it, it goes through the Office of Scholarship and Financial Aid just like any other scholarship would. So. Great. And Shannon asked, are there opportunities to assist others in research? I, to be honest, most of the time an undergrad is doing research, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Um, you, especially if you're getting paid, you know, in my field, in engineering, uh, a lot of undergraduates are paid to do research and, and their funding that they're getting to do that is coming from the grant that the, that the faculty member wrote. And so, um, you are doing research that's related to the grant that was submitted. It might be a small piece or a small part of a larger project, a larger grant. Um, but it's a very different model than what Dr. Daphne was talking about um, because there is no funding in uh, for his research. So, but it, it can be it can be independently based, um, like Dr. Daphne talked about, or it can be based on a project that's already been funded and there's already um, you know, a proposal that was submitted to a federal agency to get money to do the research. So, um, but the research that you're doing is still innovative and new and contributing to this body of knowledge in that field. And it's for others, the other, I am the other, I guess, in this question here within the psych department, there are other faculty that do research online sometimes. Um, they could potentially take on students, but we have so many students in Pullman also trying to do research that I, I try to take on as many students as I can to anybody that generally applies and has a workable project. I try to take them on and supervise them, but there could be opportunities for other faculty in my department to, for you to work with them. And it, for those of you that are psych and you've been in our classes, you know we have the resource room. If you look at the, near the bottom of the list on the left-hand side, 
you see a list where, uh, you know, you see the, instruct the uh, bios of the instructors online, but down below that you see faculty. A link to the faculty in our department. So you can look to see what other faculty are doing outside of me. And if you find somebody you connect with, maybe potentially contact them, and they may be doing something online where they could actually utilize an online student. So that is an opportunity. It doesn't just have to be with me. That was another question. I'm going to I'm going to jump ahead yeah, to another question that somebody put up there, which is, how do you find a faculty member? Mm -hmm. um, there are some resources on the website, the Office of Undergraduate Research website, that sort of take you step by step through that process of identifying who's doing what research on you know on the in the WSU institution <laughs> across any campus and Vancouver, Tri Cities, Everett, you know, um, Spokane Medical School. All of these places are are on the table for doing research because that's all part of the WSU system. Um, so you can you can find out who's doing what research and then you can learn a little bit about their research and see if it interests you. I I call this stalking faculty. Here, you Facebook stalk your friends, but you can also stalk faculty websites um, at WSU. So do a little homework, find out what they're doing. Every faculty member has a web page that describes their research interests if they are active in research. And you can find out a little bit about it, and then you can send them an email and say, Dear Dr. So-and-so, I'm interested in the research that you're doing. I, I learned about it on your website. Um, are you interested in working with undergraduates? I would like to do research under you. Is that something we can talk about? And you invite, a, a, schedule a meeting with them, a, a call, whatever it might be, and, and talk to them about research opportunities. Some faculty are going to be very receptive. Other faculty, I'll be honest, will not be receptive at all. And it's not because you're global, it's they just don't want to include undergrads. There's, there's two different camps. <laughs> um, so don't be surprised if you're your reach out is is denied. It, you know, try others. Um, don't just focus on one faculty member. Try others. Um, there are lots of faculty out there that would be more than happy to work with students, and they're interested in recruiting students to work with on research. Yeah, and Dr. Presley you can comment on this, but when you're applying to grad school, I think the important thing is for an undergrad to have research experience. It's not necessarily in what you may do in grad school. I mean, the important thing is is the experience itself. So. It may not work with ideally who you want to work with, but you work with somebody else's that's just as good and it can help you get accepted into a program. Yeah. A lot of times too, if you if you reach out to a faculty member, they might say, you know, I'm I'm not looking for any students. I'm at capacity right now. Yeah. You know, or yeah. I, I don't have any research projects that I'm interested in including students from. But you know what? My colleague down the hall is looking for a student. Why don't you contact them? And that can help you identify other faculty that are doing research. So, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, Morgan asks, are there prereqs for the Psych 499? Yeah, I, I don't know if this is every department, but in our department is we generally ask for, hey, you have done the statistics class and then the research methods class. And sometimes when students are applying uh, for 499, they are, maybe they're doing a summer session, 311, which is statistics, and then they're doing research methods in the fall. That's okay because really what you're going to have to do is when you're really writing your paper, got to know APA format, the structure of papers. I teach you that in 499 if you don't know it already, but most times you've had it. You, you're, you, could, do, you could be doing 312 in the fall or maybe even in the spring, and that's okay as long as you're kind of reading ahead or getting up to speed. But if, you, if I notice when I showed you the resources available to you, I actually give you all access to those textbooks early, right, right away. Um, because we're using OER, so Open Education Resources for those uh, courses. So you have access to that anytime. Okay, great, thank you. Ashley asked if the slides will be available after this webinar. This webinar should be recorded. It takes us about a week or so to get that all up, but then whoever is registered will receive a link to that. So they will uh, have access to this information to review it later. Shannon asks, are some of these the research we take part in for classes that require research participation? Uh, I'll, I'll take that. I think that's mostly psych. Yeah, it's, yes, I, I would, I'm, you're getting, I'm getting two things in there. You might have a class where you have to do research participation, like participate in another study. Take someone's survey. Yeah, yeah. but if you're, yeah, but if you're talking about doing your own research in a class, yes, we have that in. Psych 312 research methods and Psych 412 test and measurement. But that's not, it, I, it's not publishable research. Let me just say that I would not be able, you really would not be able to list it on the CV and try to sell it to grad schools because it's for a class. 
and it isn't actually approved by the IRB. You're only actually taking everybody else's survey in the class. It's a good, it's a good question, though. And and I'll just jump in and add to that. I know, um, for example, Lydia Gerber in in Asian Studies uses research in her curriculum in her classes, but students that want to take it further will often continue that research project after they've done finish the class. Yeah. They'll continue that as an independent study under yeah. Lydia and then present that at Circa. So just because you start research in a course, you may not get as deep into it and you don't have time in a class, yeah. but you could continue it as an independent study later. Yeah, that, I'm glad you mentioned that because actually I have students when I taught 312 last semester, I had I think one applied for 499 that was actually doing that. I recognized the project carrying over. Was that you, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was, but yeah, I think it was somebody else. Okay. Okay, so Morgan asked, can you do this sort of research even if psych is only a concentration? So you can do research. You mean you're you're like a social sciences major, but you're going to, because I'm more up higher, and then you're concentrating. I, yeah, I think that's okay. As long as I have enough openings, I take psych majors and psych minors. So that's, yeah, that should be okay. I think if your social sciences, it will be okay if your concentration is in psych. And then connecting with other Vancouver professors, Dr. Presley mentioned that earlier, you can do that through their website. But also if you're looking at our website um, for the faculty profiles, the faculty profiles are all the faculty in Pullman, me at Global, and then you've got Tri-Cities of Vancouver, they're also listed. So it actually Spokane also, because we got faculty up in Spokane. One, and she had another question, which I think kind of led on what you were talking about on mentors. She asked, uh, can you connect with Vancouver campus professors as well? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Abby says, I'm currently doing Psych 265. Is it too early for me to apply for 400 level research site class? It goes back to the prereqs question. So if you are taking 311 now, the statistics class for the non-site people, if you're doing that now, then you could apply. But again, I only accept fall. I only accept for the fall and spring, so I won't accept anybody who may ask for any applications until next spring and summer. So yeah, if you're doing 311 in that time, and even if you're not doing 312 to say fall 2019, that's okay. Um, you could definitely apply. I saw another question later that you, you really don't want to wait to your last year to do that. You want to have the opportunity to build a profile. Like if you want to go from lit review into hypothesis testing, because you can repeat those credits. I think there's no limit, but our four is no limit. I think we just changed it. But if it's four, 499 and 498 are one credit. So it's so you could do it four semesters if you had to. So you could go from lit review into hypothesis testing. And I want to echo that, that I encourage students to start research their freshman year. Yeah. You want to get started early. There's nothing more frustrating to me than yeah. a student that contacts me their senior year and says, I want to do research. Oh, I'm graduating in May. Yeah. Well, by the time I get you trained to actually do anything yeah. that's productive, you know, learning the software, the coding, or whatever it might be, you're graduating and gone. So it's a waste of my time. And so if you come in early in your career and start doing research, then you can work on the research for two, three years. And by the time you've graduated, you're doing graduate level research and you're doing papers, publishable paper research. Yeah. You know. Um, you, you said that it took you two years to get that paper published. That's not uncommon at yeah. all. Um, it can often take a long time for papers to be published after the research is done. And so um, definitely start early. Um, yeah, and, the, and the, uh, the, Ashley that was on that paper with me, she graduated and moved on to Eastern, not that the Central Washington University. So I was still communicating with her after she already left while we got that paper published. So it got her into grad school is what I'm saying. We've had a pretty good acceptance rates in the grad school. And then also too, the other thing to consider grad programs are asking you to, generally grad programs for psych at least, I'm sure it's most areas, you have to apply in the fall. So if you're not even getting involved in research until your final year, and you're at the same time getting involved in the fall and also asking for recommendation letters, we don't have enough time to get to know you. So if you start earlier in your freshman or sophomore or junior year, at least it gives us a year at least to get to know you so we can write a really good, strong letter for you. Okay, our next question. Ashley asked, how many people apply each year? How many are accepted? I think she meant to Circa, I think. Uh, Ashley, chime in. Um, we have, for Circa, typically 150 to 170 presenters. Um, and most 
most abstracts are accepted for um, we have I'd say maybe 10 that are not accepted um, uh, for circa and basically if you follow the the guidelines on how to write an abstract that are on the Circa website, your your abstract will be accepted. The ones that were not accepted were the ones that didn't follow the instructions. Um, if she, if Ashley, if you're referring to how many are accepted to do research, I can't answer that question because I don't know. You know, um, students don't necessarily apply. They talk to faculty members directly and do research or, or continue that direction. So they don't go through the Office of Undergraduate Research to apply for um, research positions. I hope that answers. Yeah. She hasn't question. replied, yeah. so hopefully. Um, Amina asks, do you think older students have full-time jobs and families can be successful in research, or is it too demanding for them? Actually, I think Rebecca or Stacy should answer that. Yeah. Hey, this is Rebecca. Yeah, I can definitely answer that. I am a bit of a non-traditional student because I am a little bit older. I work full time. I don't have kids, but I do have family in the area, including my mother who is, uh, has rheumatoid arthritis, and so I help kind of take care of her too. And yes, I did this project with that. Like any workload issue, of course, be cognizant of the time you have available uh, with other uh, academic workloads. I did not load up on a lot of classes while I was doing my hypothesis testing, huh, which is why I'm still in my program, but it's my last semester, but it was very much worth it. Uh, if you are able really to build that in and think of it as a class and you are getting credit for it, you betcha, you can do it. I, I, I also, did, 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 uh, no, I was going to say, I, you know, same with me. I did the same thing that Becky did is I just, um, I think of this as a class. And so what I would allocate, you know, the time that I would allocate to another class, I now alloc allocate to my literature review project. And of course, that meant cutting back on a class. But, um, you know, I have a family and um, th this is the way I had to do it. And, and so far it works out fine, but you know, as Becky said, you know, you, you think of it like a class and you don't take your regular class load that you otherwise would. Yeah, thank you. And, and I was just gonna chime in and say that, you know, it's important to have this conversation with your mentor. Yeah. Um, you know, some students want to do research and they say, you know what, but I can realistically only spend five hours a week. And, and so if that's been communicated with your mentor, yeah. then, you, then your mentor will understand right. your limitations and will be have same expectations for what you can accomplish in that amount of time. Mm -hmm. If you can, you, you budget 10 hours a week. Whatever your allotment is, you just communicate that with your mentor because they want to know where you're at, how much time you're putting into this, and you want to be fair and communicate that to them. And, and we know, you know midterms mm -hmm. come finals come, you know, there might be weeks when you don't touch your research because you're too busy studying for exams. And that's okay too, but communicate that. That's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, shoot your mentor an email and say, you know, this has been a crazy week. I, I, haven't, I haven't accomplished anything on research. I hope that's okay. I'll try to make up for it next week when things die down. And, and life happens. It right. happens to us all. Yeah, and, and you saw the deadlines I put up for for the psych department. You saw they were pretty spaced out. There were a lot up there, but they ran into the spring semester. So, I you know it's doable. You might not. They all had something due, or you know Stephanie's got something due for Sunday. But after that, there's a gap. There's almost a three month gap. So you're just working at your own speed. And yeah, you got to get your IRB paperwork in if you're doing hypothesis testing, and you got to be submitting your annotated bibliography if you're doing lit review. But you've got time. You don't you're not having to dedicate every moment of the day to that. In terms of the full-time job question for lit review hypothesis testing, I I don't I think you could do either. I think that's back to Rebecca was saying. So you could really do either. You know yourself. You budget your time. You got good time management skills. I think you're okay. So perfect for Ashley's question on research participation, and I saw another one further down with this. It's the 499 and 498 are reserved for majors or minors in psych or maybe social science students who are doing concentrations. That's because I'm one person, I've tried to clone myself and it hasn't been successful yet. I can't do, I really when I started this, to be honest with you, I was gonna limit it to five lit review and five hypothesis testing. Max, I have nine 
lit review this semester, but I only have one on the, on the hypothesis testing, so it's 10. So that's about as much as I can kind of do. So. Okay. Um, so you just answered the majoring in psych or yes. provincial. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So Matt, uh, also back, I'm sorry, we're backtracking a little bit, had asked what that scholarship was called that you were talking about. Okay, it's the Undergraduate Research Scholarship and Awards, and the, the specific one I was referring to is called an AUVIL Award, A-U-V-I-L. Um, we also have a couple others, Carson and DeVleague, but those are geared for more junior and senior level researchers. So the AVIL is the one for just starting out, <laughs> basic I mean, beginning researchers. So Perfect, thank you. Emily asks, career question, are there researchers who solely focus on literature reviews to find gaps in their fields, or do, or do most do a mix of lit reviews and hypothesis testing and designing studies as part of their job? You know, the lit review is always sort of the first place you start yeah. with any kind of research. But really a lit review is, is just reading what's been done. You're not doing anything new. You're not contributing to the body of knowledge. You're finding the gap yeah. of where there is missing data, but you're not contributing and filling that gap. So um, the lit review is step one. Actually yeah. doing the research is where you start to, based on what's been done before, design the next step to answer those questions to fill that gap. Yeah, in psychology, some people do publish papers that are just lit reviews, or they do meta-analyses. But they, I mean, they're doing other work, work too. They're doing hypothesis testing kind of work also, publishing out. I would almost say they're doing more of that. But yes, yeah, so along the research process, you're doing lit review, which basically builds your introduction. So what the lit review students are doing is trying to get a really good kind of framework built up for a potential thesis or a dissertation down the line. And that's actually how they've used it and, and, and been pretty successful getting the grad programs with it. Great. So we only have two more questions so far, unless someone comes up with some more. Uh, are we able to continue the research of others that are not affiliated with WSU, such as other universities? So Matt, I'm a little confused by that question. I mean, the when you do research and you do that lit review, you're looking at research across the entire world. You're not just focused on WSU research. Mm -hmm. Um, so, gotcha. does that answer? Okay. <laughs> and then he also wants to know, do you have any recommendations for students in their final year slash semester that are interested in graduate school and research? I'll let you take that. <laughs> um, I mean, I think, you know, obviously if you haven't done research, that's not a black mark, you know, I mean, you're still capable and eligible to get into graduate school. Um, I think, you know, just getting whatever perspective with the grad school that you're looking at on the research that they do is important. Uh, maybe even, um, yeah, uh, that's, that, I guess that's kind of a tough one. Um, it's kind of hard to try out grad school, you know, if you're in your last semester. Um, well, it's, so. it's not that it's a, you don't have to apologize. It's, if you only have the grades and the GRE scores, it's going to be hard to get in. That's the truth, and that's what we're trying to. That's why we're fumbling with this because that's what the answer is. <laughs> and I know in psychology, that's it's going to be hard. One thing I could recommend, Matt, if you have, are you in? I'm assuming you're in your last year, right? It, it, are you applying to grad programs now, or thinking to, thinking about it? Oh, yeah, there's the mic. Uh, can everybody hear me? <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, it's much easier to speak than type. Uh, what What was the question? It uh, It kind of faded out there. Are you trying to? Are you You're graduating? You said so. Are you looking to apply to grad programs now, or are you looking to maybe apply next year or something? A year in between. Uh, as soon as possible. Um, so if you know, in a perfect world, you know, yeah, as soon as I graduate, just move right on to the next step if if I could, and and sort of how to get there. But then I. I, I kind of backtracked in my mind as soon as I heard, well, you know, it's best to start off in the beginning so, you know, we get a chance to know you and so it makes perfect sense. And so I was like, oh, wow, that took, none of that really took place yet. But because I'm, I'm just now kind of shifting my focus in terms of my interest and in what I really want to do. And and I do like research. And that's that's mm -hmm. why I just kind of got fascinated with this. So um, in terms of going uh, to graduate school, um, is, am I too late? Am I, am I, you know, am I getting an interest in this too late in the game? I'm, you know, I guess that's kind of where I'm lost. You're, you're, Matt, you're a psych major, right? I recognize your name. I think. 
I I was um, I uh, the, but uh, just like uh, <laughs> we were fumbling with the the scores, you got to have the scores, uh, you know, and that's that's just the fact of the matter, and there's no problem with that. I kind of uh, my scores kind of dropped, and so I I chose uh, a different major, and then there's also psych 311 and 312 that I didn't do. So I, I just like I said, I just took a different direction, and so and I'm and I'm okay with that, but I still do. Uh, I am still fascinated with. Uh, a lot of research in clinical psychology and stuff like that. So I guess. Okay. Because the grad programs are going to look for a 311, 312, there's equivalents, whatever whatever university. The only thing I could say to anybody who's kind of getting into that last year and ha doesn't have the time to get involved in research, and this is outside of this call, look at the resource room I have on there. There's opportunities for a TA in. So wow. I have those also for grading TAs, instructional TAs, and tutors. And you can still get. I, I had before we ever had the research opportunities. That's what I had, and we had students getting in with that alone too. Oh, okay. so there is hope. There is hope, but just be aware you need to jump on that quickly for the spring because that's going to be your last semester, correct? Yes, this is this is my last semester right now. Okay, and if you need to, so we don't take up all the time talking about your specific situation. If you want to email me, we can talk on the phone. Okay. Great, I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much, Doctor. No problem. Okay. Shannon has yeah, a question. Shannon's last, uh, question is, I, and I think this is going to be our last question because we've already hit the 7 o'clock mark. I work in an office that employs mainly LCSWs, and I'm thinking about exploring that master's program instead of a pure psych program. I assume this type of research would still be useful in applying for continuation in those grad programs. Clearly, each is individual, just as generalization. Yeah, yes. definitely. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. Back to that, that point from earlier, research, some research or any research is better than no research. And research is a yeah. is going to help you in whatever you do because of the you're you're developing critical thinking skills, hands on, yeah. teamwork in some cases, communication skills. All of these skills are yeah. things that everybody wants you yeah. to have, whether it's a job or grad school. So you are your learning skills that are they're going to be applicable to anything you do and it's different than the skills you learn taking a class yeah. so and hey shannon i have a lot of psych students that apply to social work programs i just wrote a couple recommendation letters in the last couple weeks so yeah it's, it's a common path a lot of psych students go into social work okay well, thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. And um, Matt, you're saying you wish there was more webinars like this. We try to do several different types of webinars, touching on everything. Always check our page, uh, connections.wsu.edu, for a list of all the events that we try to have available for you Global Campus students. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Stacy and Rebecca and everybody that attended. And uh, have a great night. Thanks, Go Thanks, Thanks. Bye.